Welcome to Noxe Carnival Festival number seven here in Berlin, and I'm with Marius from Rier. Uh, so, first of all, tell me a bit about your band. Um, yeah, the band was uh, founded in um, 2018, end of 2018, so we exist more or less one year, could theoretically celebrate uh, one year anniversary. <laughs> Uh, yeah, roughly, roughly by now. Um, yeah, uh, so I founded the band together with Lucas. Um, we, uh, yeah, we, we came together. Basically, my idea was um, since I'm I'm in Berlin and we we played in, in several bands before. The plan was to, yeah, just do an instrumental um, post metal instrumental doom band um, that is like um, a bit of a combination between or like like centers along um, Russian circles, uh, Omega Massif, uh, Lost in Kiev, Fear of No Light, where uh, inspirations for me and I thought um, it would be really nice to have like a atmospheric sound but still with crushing riffs. Uh, so we so I tried to um, yeah create a good good clean guitar sound and combine it with um, like heavy distorted riffs. That's the main idea and I was lucky enough to find very nice and, and talented people to play with. Um, and yeah, we, um, we, we are lucky or really happy that we just released our first um, full length album, which is called uh, Left Fellow. Um, yeah, um, released with uh, Nashada Records, um, and yeah, that's our first, um, yeah, uh, our first record, and we um, we will release it on vinyl um, January the tenth, uh, two thousand twenty, um, and are happy about that. Uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was uh, your first album, as you said. So, mm. how was the making process? Uh, the making process was um, a bit one-sided, so to speak. So, um, I first started with one song um, back in summer 2018 to have a look whether it works with with a sound or whether it's a good idea, and primarily to find people um, to explain. Okay, that would be like roughly the music. Um, the music I, I, I like to play like really roughly and then it turned out to be the first song uh, it's uh, also on the album it's called late um, yeah and so then it was like a lot of fun uh, to, to do this kind of stuff at home uh, so I, I yeah basically I wrote all the songs together uh, wrote all the songs at home like of course we did some amendments in the rehearsal room uh, and said, okay, yeah, this might not fit, or this is like a really hard transition. Uh, this is something that shouldn't be <laughs> shouldn't be done, or it's really hard to play live. Um, yeah, and then we we said, okay, we would more or less be ready to hit the studios because um, it's always hard to uh, get off the ground with a band without any proper recordings. I I must say and. I don't. I mean, it's also fine to release dem to release demos, but uh, since we all uh, had a lot of ideas, um, yeah, we we thought, okay, we might um, just go ahead and try to record an album, um, and then we did that in July this year at um, Hidden Planet Studios in Berlin, um, and yeah, we don't have that much uh, studio um, studio experience, so. Um, Thanks for uh, Jan Oberg from Hidden Planets uh, Studios to, to bear with us. Uh, I promise next time will be better. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, the band is called Rier, mm -hmm. which, if I understand correctly, is Icelandic and meets something in the lines of uh, weak. So, how did that? Yeah, uh, re weak or like um, fellow or spare, um, sparse, spare. Yeah, um, yeah, so long, long story short, uh, we first of all thought it would be nice to have like just a name of th three letters. Malta, our drummer, additionally is a big Sigur Ross fan who is also from, from, from Iceland. Uh, so we just had a look through dictionaries basically to, to see what might fit. Uh, it also like looks nice because it's symmetrical. Uh, and then it, it kind of... Um, I kind of I think suits suits the music because the music is like very um, it's like not it's not like a lot of layers it's just like two guitars one guitar is oftentimes clean 
the end plays fabrical stuff, the other guitars plays distorted riffs. That's a thing that um, happens quite often in the band or in, in, in the music. And we thought it it's really nice to play with, with this aesthetic to, of something that is like very like um, yeah, how can I say it? Um, like very um, non-hectic, very uh, calm. But like, if you look at the detail, it's just as if you look at a fellowed place, you wouldn't expect something special there. But if you if you have have a greater look, it is um, you might ex you might find something very beautiful or something very unique or something very inspiring. And we thought that would suit the band. Um, it's not too over the top something uh, but also yeah plays plays around with um, like abstract abstract ideas and, and riffs and so we, we thought the name was, was just like very suitable for that and um, yeah and as I said uh, it, it looks nice that was also definitely an aspect <laughs> okay and uh, how did the decision to do instrumental music came by and will there ever be vocals yeah um so there are new songs in the making and um i think uh, some of us me me included could definitely uh yeah would, would definitely consider lyrics or like a feature or something um if you if you <laughs> may call it like that in in this genre um so I, that is something that would be nice but it's um, definitely, I think um, it will definitely remain a more or less merely um, instrumental band. Yeah, so the, the idea was always, uh, I, I really love instrumental music, I've, I've been listening it for, for years now. Um, I think you have like more opportunities to unfold all the, the instruments, all the guitars, you don't have like a classical pop song. Um, yeah, build up or pop song, uh, pop song, uh, song structure. You you can just basically do whatever you want, and I and I really like that. And um, I mean, and there are great singers out there, but but to be honest, I think uh, it can be quite hard to find a, a suitable singer that is um, first of all a nice person, uh, second does like really really good lyrics and has a voice that would suit the music, but. Yeah, as, as I said, it's it's definitely uh, there might be passages in, in songs that might might include lyrics. Um, that is definitely something that we might consider. But um, yeah, I, I think. Um, but overall, I think uh, Ria will will, um, will remain a merely instrumental band. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go to the festival here tonight, mm -hmm. uh, Noxay Carnival. What are your thoughts on this festival? Uh, cheap beer and great bands? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that, that, sums, that sums it up quite well. Um, no, I, I really like it. It's um, something new for me or for us. It's like a, a festival in, in like this kind of location, which is like really, really well organized. Uh, the people are really, really nice. I mean, that's not, not, not an exception, but the... Um, like uh, carnival circus uh, circus themed um, yeah theme uh, is, is really nice and, and fits fits the music also quite well so yeah people took took a lot of efforts in this um, and or yeah and that is something that's really really nice and um, yeah it's also for free <laughs> so I think uh, yeah there are a lot of or like plenty of people around that's that's really good um, yeah and really nice and, and friendly atmosphere overall which I think is the most important uh, thing and yeah we got really um, thank you for for taking um, that much care of us um, all the people that, that work here so we got like nice nice drinks and food um, so yeah, that's basically all you you can ask for. It's just nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, you played already uh, tonight. About your mm. lives, uh, what kind of experience should the uh, rear concert be for the listener? Um, yeah, it should. Um, most of all, it should be kind of immersive. That would be really nice if some someone like really kind of dives into and like if someone like would would love to like grab a chair and sit down and listen for it for, for, for some time uh, and to, to relax to it, that, that would be really nice. But of course also if you like to move uh, a bit around to the more crushing riffs, as that is also very, very welcomed. I think we have like both, um, both aspects. Um, yeah, so I think primarily it's also really, really dark music, but um, I would also like if people 
yeah, experience like positive emotions while listening to this music and yeah, just be like immersed by by the sound. That, that would be nice, but uh, of course that depends on, on the listener. <laughs> um, it might not always succeed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I read online that you are against uh, racism, mm. homophobia, and sexism. Oh, yeah, among know, other who, things. Yeah, 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 <laughs> but, yeah who, who isn't? But how important are like politics and ideals for uh, Rear as a band? Um, yeah, um, important, I would say. So um, I think, especially in the metal scene, you have to kind of stress that to to some extent. I mean, it doesn't have to get like much into details, but like detailed enough to. Um, yeah, to say that you wouldn't support like certain festivals, labels, or bands, which which happens quite often still in the scene, and which also like it starts to get some attention, which uh, we find is is a good thing. But I think like uh, for for a long period of time, people were just like uh, trying to be like or uh, very edgy, and then um, afterwards, after like ridiculous things. Um, especially uh, when it comes to black metal. Um, by the way, we really like black metal, so it's a bit sad that these things happen <laughs> or happened with with black metal. Um, but if you like, be very edgy, and afterwards you just come up with excuses. Oh yeah, we we are unpolitical. So I think Ria doesn't really accept this answer because, yeah, if you if you like if you play in front of people if you have like an internet social media presence whatever like if you have interviews then you already are kind of in the public space i mean it depends on the band probably not too much but to some extent and then you will influence other people and um, that is already something that is kind of, of of political and if you if you just say you're unpolitical um, and be, be edgy and say like stupid things then it's something we would yeah we don't like and we would also um, prefer not to play with these bands if we know in advance we I mean you cannot always know it but I think in the majority of cases um, yeah, we hopefully have good indicators for that and would like to yep yeah, just play with with nice um, bands at, at like nice venues and um, and people who like roughly share uh, the same same like po political views or the same like views how you should treat other um, other individuals <laughs> okay yeah great and uh, well what's the grand plan for Rear mm. if yeah. everything goes perfect uh, mm. what does the future yeah. hold I mean, if everything goes well, I mean, there are a couple of nice festivals we we would uh, like not say no to 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 play there. Um, I mean, ideally, we um, like the the album will get like at least some some um, some attention. It would be nice to have like a small tour um, uh, next year and also to play maybe like yeah, let's just say two to three nice festivals in, in summer, like also outdoor because this is. Um, like an experience we don't we don't have, have yet. I mean, I think several members of us played uh, on an open air, but uh, Ria hasn't yet. So that that would be something um, that we we really would like. And yeah, and definitely to to record to record a second album and just to play as much shows as possible with other nice people. Um, yeah, I think that's for now. That's the grand plan. So no. No, like very detailed or like huge. No headlining Wacken. <laughs> uh, well, probably not. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, thank and you uh, very all much. The best. Thanks. <laughs>